glad to be with you guys here this week. Hopefully you are refreshing your timelines. Um, I know that there had been some technical difficulties making sure that you all could see everything that you needed to see. Um, and hopefully um, as we persist, um, all of those kinks will be worked out. So I am glad to uh, see you guys tonight. I'm glad to be with you guys tonight. Really excited about the word tonight. I'm um, trying to give you guys a couple minutes to get on, and I'm sure um, refresh your screens so that we can begin to commune this week. Um, as always, I want to welcome you to a New Church, where our uh, mission is to spread the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ um, globally and digitally. Um, so I thank you for joining me in that call, um, in that discipleship, um, and in this purpose and movement, um, this mighty movement of God. Thank you guys so much for being here. As always, you can always visit our website, um, www.thisnewchurch.com. Um, we were using the other system, but I think we're going to stick with this, especially if I'm just on it um, for right now. So um, if you join, say hello so that I can see who you guys are. And also, when you guys do watch the replays, please feel free to do that as well so that we can continue to stay connected. We have a few things that we're working on. Um, we're still new, so we're working out quite a few kinks um, <laughs> on, on, at so many levels. But I'm so grateful for... Um, what God is doing, um, the feedback that we have gotten thus far, um, letting us know that we are definitely on the right track um, and just to continue to move forward and to be diligent in the work. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Um, tonight we will be reading from Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, it is in the subject line. Um, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Um, so if you would now, we will stop and bow our heads for our opening prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity of worship. We thank you for the opportunity to touch and agree in a more realized way, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity in the uh, position of community. We thank you for your word and we thank you for loving us so much, Lord. We thank you for all of the provisions that you have made for us, all of the, the attention to detail and the caring that you've done, Lord. But tonight we focus on your grace and how we are so astonished of all that you've done for us. We're so grateful of what your grace provides. We know that we must keep our faith intact so that we can receive the fullness thereof. So I ask that you be with us on tonight as we dive into your word. I ask that I decrease and you increase, Lord. Allow your people to search their hearts so that they can get to know you more and hear a word from you on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay. So tonight we are reading from Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to read it to you guys in the Amplified. Um, Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. And again, I'm reading from the um, Amplified uh, version. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified, that is, acquitted of sin, declared blameless, excuse me, declared blameless before God by faith. Let us grasp the fact that we have peace with God and the joy of reconciliation with him through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah and anointed. Through him, we also have access by faith into this remarkable state of grace in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and the confident assurance of experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God, the manifestation of his excellence, my God, and his power. And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our suffering 
and rejoice in our hardships, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble produces patient endurance and endurance, proven character, spiritual maturity, and proven character, hope, and confident assurance of eternal salvation. Such hope in God's promises never disappoint us because God's love has been abundantly poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given, who was given to us. Amen. That's such a beautiful word. I also encourage you guys to uh, continue to read all of Romans chapter five because it just, it <laughs> really gets better from there. Um, but so to protect the integrity of our time together, I wanted to just read that excerpt with you. Um, so again, we're at Romans uh, chapter five, verses one through five. Um, so we see here in Romans uh, verse excuse me, chapter five, verse one, that therefore, since we have been justified, that is acquitted, acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God by faith, let us grasp the fact <laughs> that we have peace with God and that the joy of reconciliation with him through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah and the anointed. My first point is that we must grasp, grasp the fact that we have peace with God. The word of God says that we have been acquitted of our sin and declared blameless to God. Now we do that by faith because it says by faith. Faith keeps coming up for us, right? We've talked about faith so many times um, in so many previous Bible studies, as well as um, the Bible studies that I have weekly um, with the Disciple Divas. Um, you know, we, and I think just as believers in general, we continue to have this resounding theme of faith. Our faith is tested. Our faith is attacked. We need to grow in faith. But tonight, we're going to talk about what our faith actually does for us and why our, our faith is so important. Right here, it's telling us that we've been justified, that is acquitted of sin, declared blameless by faith. So that means we have to believe. <laughs> we have to believe that, right? Our faith is always attacked and even so more challenged. We forget or rather take for granted the power that our faith has. Our faith is the perfect positioner. It gets us into position. It postures our hearts and our minds to ensure that we can be in position to receive the fullness thereof, to receive God's grace, to receive God's mercy and God's power. Our faith puts us in position. Our faith helps us really to remember that when God looks at us, he loves us. That when God looks at us, that we are blameless, that we are, have been acquitted of sin. Our faith allows us to reap all of the benefits, and not only that, all of the promises that God has said to us. That's what our faith does. It puts us into in position to receive God. And that is why our faith is tested. That is why our faith is challenged. That is why we have to strengthen our faith. That's why we got to exercise in faith. That's why we have to strengthen our faith muscle because our faith is really the portal. It's really the catalyst to everything that God says we can have, everything that God says is ours, everything that God says we are. Our faith puts us into position to receive and believe who God is and who we are to him. And so when you feel yourself in a, a struggle of faith, you have to understand why that is. It's because our faith keep, puts us in position. Our faith is what helps us check our flesh to make sure that we don't let our flesh get in our way. To make sure, and when I say get in our way, get in our way to know that I messed up. I've asked for forgiveness. God has done it. I can move on. Because sometimes we let our flesh trick us into thinking that we're unworthy, that God doesn't love us, that our sin is too great. But here we see 
that if we can just tap into our faith, our faith can remind us and put us in a place of position where we can receive God's justification, where we can receive Christ acquitting us of our sins, where we can be in position to believe that and to receive that. That's what our faith does with, does for us, right? So for me, we have this resounding theme of faith, and it's not by happenstance that it's so, you know, such a mega theme for believers, faith, right? We, ha- we deal with it all, <laughs> all the time. It's always a thing. And I think, I believe that when I'm going through things, I know that I can always pinpoint where my faith is. Well, I don't really believe this, or I'm having trouble with this, or my faith is not as strong as it needs to be, or I need to grow in faith in this area. And we're going to continue to go through these different revolutions because our faith is so incredibly important. And then we have uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 2. And it says, through him, we also have what? Access. My God. We have access by faith through this remarkable state of grace and to this remarkable state of grace in which we firmly, securely, and safely stand. Mm. So that, this is what grace, this is what faith does. It gives us access to all the things that we desperately need from God. Most, most importantly, his grace right? And it's interesting that grace is God's free and unmerited favor for sinful humanity.